Our project is the Viral Mite Monitoring System. Our team consisted of Brandon DeFore, Kaylee Stowe, Zachary Lobestall, Austin Johnson, and Hunter Vanderplug. We worked in conjunction with our sponsor, the Be Informed Partnership. Viral mites are a parasitic mite that prey on juvenile honeybees. They're currently the largest danger to honeybee populations in America as they're carriers of many deadly diseases and are extremely efficient at spreading between hives. They fly out on worker bees and transfer from one bee to another that may fly back to a different hive. Mite infestations are measured as a percentage of infested bees within a colony. The scope of our project was to design and build a device to autonomously agitate a sample of honeybees and filter the varroa mites from those bees. We are also tasked with designing a bee counting vision system to count the number of bees within a given sample with an accuracy of at least 95%. The current practice for separating varroa mites from honeybees is as follows. Samples are taken using a half cup measuring scoop, which results in a sample of 270 to 330 bees. 300 bees is the ideal number, which is approximately 1% of a healthy summer colony. Samples are then loaded into a mason jar with alcohol and shaken by hand in order to dislodge the mites. Bees and mites are then separated using wire mesh strainers and a series of sieves as seen in the picture to the right. The goals of the mite separation device portion of our project were to combine the removal and sorting of mites from the bees into a single step to reduce the amount of work done by a user with the shaking process to reduce the overall time spent by the user while taking samples and recording the number of mites in each sample. For the vision system, the main goal was to provide a more accurate method to count the number of bees in a given sample than the simple scoop method currently used. Some constraints to this project were that the device must be powered by a power source available in the field, the device must have a lifespan greater than 450 hours, must have a cycle time of less than four minutes, where cycle time is defined as starting, when the bees, mites, and alcohol have been inserted in the device and the device is turned on, and ending when the device turns off. The device must also be heat and water resistant for use in the field, and the total cost of the project must not exceed the budget of $1,800. Some important specifications for this project were that the entire device must have a footprint no greater than 24 inches by 24 inches, and must weigh less than 40 pounds for ease of transport. The container itself must be watertight to prevent leakage and must have a mouth diameter within the range of three to five inches to allow for easy loading of samples. The entire device must be heat resistant up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit and must be chemically resistant to isopropyl alcohol. We will now go into detail about the mite separation device portion of our project. Our team tested multiple methods before we were able to select a concept. Most of the concepts that we tested relied on physical movement of the entire container in order to agitate the bees, much like the current practice does. However, the concept that was chosen was bubble agitation. In bubble agitation, an air pump is used to create bubbles which then agitate the bees and in turn separate the mites from their bodies. The advantages of this concept included that it was safer to operate than the shakers, much easier to manufacture, cost less, and had significantly fewer wear components that would have to be replaced over time. This video demonstrates how bubble agitation is used in our system. Air is forced through the tube on the right using a pump. It is then output through a specially designed tip that distributes bubbles along the inner walls of the container. These bubbles force the bees upward along the edge of the container and allow them to fall in the center. The motion that this creates allows for the maximum number of impacts between the bodies of the bees and as a result, dislodges mites extremely effectively. This video demonstrates how bubble agitation is used in our system. Air is forced through the tube on the right using a pump. 
It is then output through a specially designed tip that distributes bubbles along the inner walls of the container. These bubbles force the bees upward along the edge of the container and allow them to fall in the center. The motion that this creates allows for the maximum number of impacts between the bodies of the bees, and as a result, dislodges mites extremely effectively. One somewhat unique aspect of our project is that it was designed as a do-it-yourself or DIY build. Our sponsor, the Bee Informed Partnership, is a nonprofit organization that works with both professional and amateur beekeepers across the country. Early in the project, the decision was made to design the device as something that could be put together as a weekend DIY project by an average beekeeper. Because of this, we designed our device so that it could be built using common tools found in most home workshops. The most important aspect of our design is the mite separation container. It is made of rugged but relatively inexpensive materials. How it works is the container is filled with alcohol and a sample of bees. Agitation is applied and mites are dislodged from the bees. A coarse mesh, denoted in the exploded view as bee mesh, keeps the bees trapped in the upper portion of the container. The mites pass through the coarser mesh and fall into a finer mesh below where they are caught. In the exploded view, the finer mesh is denoted as mite mesh. The container is then drained of alcohol and separated at the threaded union. Upon, upon separation, the mites can be easily counted on the finer mesh. Here's our full device assembly. The image on the right has the fe key features called out. There are two mite separation chambers to allow the user to run two samples simultaneously while also collecting more samples from the field. The power supply is a large lithium ion battery pack and the air pumps are used to supply fresh air to each container at a rate of 45 liters per minute. The bait was manufactured out of plywood for ease of manufacture and cost savings. The timing unit is programmable and allows the user to create their own custom cycle. All electronic components are equipped with overcurrent and overheat protection, along with waterproof housings. This video shows a time lapse of the final step of our assembly. While it's not the entire build, it does show how many of the key features are assembled. Here's a demo from our device being tested in the field at the GVSU Sustainable Agriculture Program Hives. First, a scoop of live bees is added to the container. The bees are then capped and given a firm shape to in incapacitate them. The container is then attached to the base. and airlines are connected. We can then start the cycle. When the cycle is complete, the containers are drained of alcohol. Once the draining is completed, the airlines are disconnected and the top half of the container is removed at the union. The user can then inspect the meshes for for all mites. In this case, as you can see, there are two.
All tests are conducted with a fresh sample of bees, which are first processed through our device and then through the baseline method mentioned earlier. For our most recent lab testing result, 98% of mites were recovered by our device, while 2% were recovered by the baseline method. For 97 out of 99 mites, over 15 individual samples. Field testing was slightly more limited. While we only had five samples, we were still able to achieve a success rate of 87%. It's assumed that over a larger sample size, this percentage would go up. Hello, my name is Brandon DeFore, and I will be discussing the vision system portion of this project. The goal of the vision system for this project was to conduct research into developing an image processing model that would be able to detect the number of bees present to a 95% accuracy. The current method to count the number of bees is an estimation of 300 plus or minus 10%. This higher accuracy will allow the beekeepers to have more accurate infestation rates of their hives. This is our testing plan for our cascading classifiers. First, we're going to train the model with our given constraints. We're going to test the model to determine the accuracy. The accuracy is below 75%. We're going to move on to the next implementation method. It's between 75 and 95%. We're going to retrain the model with new parameters. And if it's above 95%, the specification was met, and we will move on from there. The more detailed the more detailed constraints of this vision system are the camera must be 12 megapixels or better. The image must be taken from a distance to where all four corners of the drip pan are visible. The background of the image must be the drip pan. Ensure that there are no clumping in the z-axis and to use the flash to reduce any shadows that may occur. The first method that was explored was blob analysis and segmentation. This method groups like pixels into objects, and based on the area of these objects, we can make an assumption of how many bees are present. For example, the grouping of four bees at the bottom of this image has a larger area than a single bee, and therefore we can make the assumption that that is more than one bee and four bees. This method wasn't chosen because of the uncertainty that comes with making those kind of estimations, and in the field, bees are clumped in one massive clump, so blob analysis would not be ideal. Image processing generally needs positive images to help the model understand what it is looking for. To do this, annotations need to be made for images that have the desired object in them. The coordinates were logged for the location of every desired object in the image. Three data sets were created. The first was a very constrained system that had the beast separated and not clumped. The second data set is of our final constraints but annotated with bounding boxes. The third is the same data set as the second but annotated with polygons. Each data set has about 500 positive images and 250 negative images, where negative images are images that do not contain the desired object within them. The second method that was explored is called cascading classifiers. This method uses annotated images to create a classification profile for the desired objects. Using this profile to determine if the grouping of pixels is in fact the desired object. This is done by separating the classifications into multiple stages, each with the specific feature of the object it is looking for. The object possesses the feature, it passes through that stage and on to the next. This will happen for each of the stages until it either fails one or makes it all the way through, at which point the model will be able to determine to a level of confidence if the object is the desired object. Multiple cascading classifier models were created using varied input values that are found within the OpenCV library. We use the validation data set of 50 images to determine the accuracy of each model. We compared the value of the model output to the known value of number of bees to determine the accuracy for each model. The highest accuracy achieved was 77%. After cascading classifiers were determined to not be a viable solution, we explored deep learning algorithms. From our consultants, we learned that Keras or PyTorch were going to be good libraries to explore. We decided that Keras would be the one we move forward with. Um, first, we needed to convert current data sets from our JSON formatting to a COCO formatting. 
Um, using this library, we attempted RCNN masking to accomplish our goal, um, but ultimately we ran out of time and had to pivot to more documentation to finish out the project. This, the data sets were converted though as a stepping off point for whoever picks it up after us. Due to the time of year the project was started, the number of samples with mites in them were extremely rare. This caused us to have to test our agitation method with caraway seeds embedded in the bees. Another challenge that was faced during the field test is that we noticed that the freshly dead bees clung onto each other much more than the samples we received. This caused the team to have to think of how to increase the agitation of the bees in the two container system. Some further challenges that our team faced was difficulty with simulation. Simulation was extremely challenging due to the difficult stripes and structures of bees' bodies and it being very hard to model those. Also, clumping in the z-axis of the third vision counting system became a very large issue as you can't see more than one body at the same time. <laughs> 